All right, now that you've learned some C, uh, let's go back and have a look at what you need to implement for the assignment. So basically we have this overview picture here of uh, different stages in the pipeline. Uh, so if you have a look at this red part here, that's what you have to implement during this course. So uh, remember in the er earlier parts, we were talking about an assembler that takes input uh, an assembly file. So the Java assembly file, then it assembles it into a binary. Well, your task is to take this binary and run it and generate the right output. So basically this part is already implemented for you. We have al already given you the implementations for all of these things. This is the part you should focus on, the actual virtual machine. So how to start uh, with, uh, yeah, how to get started with the assignment. So we've provided you with a skeleton uh, that you can get from here. So check it out from uh, GitHub. Uh, so you do a git clone and then you go into the directory. Uh, you can build stuff using the make file. So type in the command make. Uh, the course manual has some description on how to install this if you're on Windows, for example. Uh, if you type make, uh, it will try to build the IJVM binary uh, called IJVM, uh, created in the root directory of your project. And then you invoke this binary using, well, the name of the binary and then the input file. So the input IJVM binary that you want to run. So that's basically how to build stuff. Uh, but then of course we provide you with a number of test cases. Uh, so you can build the test by doing make test one to build the test for module one, for example. Uh, this will build a test binary, uh, which you can then run and it will print some output uh, saying whether you, your implementation passed or failed the tests. Uh, you can run all the basic tests. So the ones that remember, like the ones that you have to pass to get a, to even get a final grade uh, using make test basic. And you can run all the tests we have using make test all. So once you've downloaded the skeleton, you will see a file layout that looks something like this. So you have a tree structure, uh, of files, something like this. Uh, so there's a make file that is used to build the project. There's a readme with some, yeah, have a look at the readme. I think it describes how to uh, how to build stuff. Then there's an include folder, uh, which has some header files in it. Uh, so mainly focus on the ijvm.h. This one specifies all the uh, interface, uh, interface that you need to implement. So we use these for the tests. Then there's a util.h that has some useful debugging uh, helper functions. Then mainly you will be working in the source directory. So here, uh, cre yeah, place your C files here and header files and whatever. Of course, you can also place your header files in the include folder. It's, it's up to you really how to structure this. And then there's a test folder uh, with all the tests. So if you get stuck at a certain test case, have a look at the source code for the test so that you understand what they're, uh, what they're actually testing for. And finally, there's also a tools folder uh, which contains simply a make file, uh, which will download the assembler, for example, and install it for you. So let's get back to the grading. Uh, I already mentioned this at an earlier stage, but basically you get 40% for passing the basic test and we require you to actually pass all of these. So that's a hard requirement for passing the course. Then there's 30% of your grade based on the advanced tests. So 30% scale linearly to the number of tests that you pass. Then there's 10% uh, for style and general impression. So that's the only uh, part of the grade that you can't really calculate yourself. So the first part, uh, yeah, it, just run it locally or sub, well, you can submit it using code grade and then you'll already get your grade for these parts. And of course, if you add these things up, it's a maximum of an eight. So if you want a higher grade than an eight, you should be uh, you should implement some of the additional functionalities that we specify in chapter six of the course manual. And you're free to pick and choose whatever of the additional features that you want to implement. So you can implement all of them, but yeah, it's a lot of work. So pick and choose wisely. Uh, well, a bit about tests. So I already mentioned there in the tests directory, uh, we have five basic tests. Uh, which again, right, like to stress this, you need to pass all of them. Then there's advanced tests. So there's, uh, I think, yeah, 20 advanced test cases. Uh, so if you pass all 20, you get three points on your final grade. If you pass 10 of them, you get 1.5 points on your final grade and so on. There's also uh, a test called test bonus heap. So this is for one of the additional features that we'll uh, get to like in the last week of the course probably. Uh, so th that one is not really used for grading, but it's mainly used for you to check that your additional feature 
implementation uh, works correctly. So that's, by the way, also the only test we have for one of the additional features. Uh, then an example of how to calculate your grade. I think it's quite uh, self-explanatory. So first of all, like suppose you pass the basic tests and a few of the advanced tests. So test advanced one, two, three, four, and five, uh, which turns out to be 10 out of the 20 test cases. Well, then you get 40% plus half times 30%, which equals 55%, so a 5.5. And since the few, you can't get the final grade 5.5, uh, you would end up with a six if, for example, you get zero uh, points for style and wouldn't implement any of the additional features. Then I'd like to mention some useful tools that you should be using during this course. So first of all, use a debugger, so GDB or LLDB. So we have a short tutorial on this in the manual we also have some links uh, to some better, more elaborate tutorials on these tools. Uh, then XXD or HexDump, uh, these tools uh, print, well, take an input file and print it as hexadecimal. So it's useful for looking at what certain binaries contain. And then of course, well, if you haven't started using Git or Mercurial or any other version control yet, now is the time to start using this. It's super useful. And then of course, well, pick and choose whatever editor or IDE you want there's enough debate about which of these things to use, but feel free to choose whatever. So to recap all the different modules. So the first module is, well, loading and parsing a binary. The second one is to implement some stack uh, operation, stack manipulation instructions. The third module is branching. So implement something like the go to. Module four is uh, implementing local variables and constant pool. So basically memory access for the IJVM. Module five is methods, uh, so the invoke virtual and I return that we were talking about. And so the five, uh, fir like five first modules are the mandatory ones. And then there's a last module, which is the additional functionality, uh, where you can pick and choose from a bunch of different cool uh, projects to add on top of your IJVM implementation. So we have, for example, uh, you can add networking support so that you can have two IJVM instances talking to each other or a debugger and so on. So, of course, uh, well, I already mentioned this multiple times, the pace, like it's a really high pace course, so get started today. Uh, if you have any troubles or issues, uh, there's a Q&A session on Tuesday. And of course, you can always use a discussion board to ask questions. So your plan of action for now is download the skeleton, get it to compile, uh, sign up for a meeting time slot once we open, uh, time slot enrollment, we'll announce this on Canvas, and then start working on the assignment. So more concretely, how do you start? Uh, well, suppose you download the uh, whole skeleton. So mainly you'll be working in source slash machine.c. So open that file and have a look. It already has some comments in there. So if you have the uh, skeleton downloaded, try to compile it using make test one, for example, to build a test for the first module. Well, the compilation will fail because you will not have implemented a bunch of the functions that you need, uh, well, that we need for the interface to, to test your implementation. So for example, it will complain that you haven't implemented step or text size. So make sure to add these functions uh, in source machine.c or whatever other C file. So have a look at the include slash ijvm.h. There you see the definition of these things and what they're supposed to do. Uh, and you start implementing the method or well, function in it IJVM. Uh, it already has some comments on what to do. Uh, and also you can look, have a look at the manual to see how to read in files and so on. So then for module one, more concretely, what you do is you take an input binary and start reading and parsing the block. So remember you first check the magic number, see that it matches the magic number. Then you take the constant pool block, parse it, and then the text block, parse it and save it somewhere in memory so that you can access it later. And well, a hint is to have a look at the website that we have. So we have a nice tool called the IJVM Binary Explorer that gives you a more in-depth explanation of all the different parts of a certain binary. And so once you've added these uh, functions, you can run make test, uh, test one again, and then hopefully it will build successfully and then you should be able to run the test using the test one binary. So from your command line, run test one. Uh, of course, once you do this, uh, you will probably get an assertion error if you haven't, because you haven't implemented all the requirements yet. So here, here's an example, you do make test one, then we run the binary and then 
the test fails at a certain point uh, with an assertion error. So, okay, so you're at this point now and you have no idea what to do. Let's have a look at how to approach this. So you have this assertion error here. Uh, a good thing, well, a nice thing that you can do uh, is to just open your debugger. That's probably the easiest solution here. So open GDB or LLDB, uh, load in your binary, and then you will get something like the following. Uh, so GDB will start up and print some stuff. Uh, then you can run your program using the R or run command, uh, which will run your whole program. And then at some point it will crash at this uh, assertion error with an abort. Uh, so at this point, well, it's basically the same that we already saw, but it's just running your program in GDB. Uh, so have, let's have a look at how we can debug stuff. So you can set a breakpoint at a certain point. So that's already been done before here. Uh, or so I think it sets a breakpoint at here test slash test one dot c line thirteen, and before the assert, we can uh, print different variables in GDB using pip, for example. This will well print. Uh, well, print the address of this stuff, but basically we don't want that. We want to see what's in the actual array here. So if you do pip index zero, it will print seven. Well, if you look at the assert here, it expects ip zero to be zero x ten or the value sixteen, and it's seven here. But look here, we print uh, the next index in this array, and that turns out to be sixteen. So here the issue was that it's uh, you, the implementation had an off by one error, for example. So by just looking at the different values using the debugger, we can pretty quickly get an idea of what, uh, what's gone wrong. So that's a bit about GDB. So of course there's a lot more to it. So uh, yeah, feel free to have a look at some online tutorials. Uh, the second point I want to uh, mention is to be well prepared for your first meeting. So these meetings are really short, only 20 minutes to so try to maximize whatever you can get out of these things. Uh, so for your first meeting, we expect you to be well on your way with the first assignment. So to at least like read in the file and start trying to parse the different blocks in there. Uh, so for each meeting, there's a set schedule for this and we expect you to basically be done with the corresponding module. But yeah, for, for the first meeting, of course, you, you won't probably won't be done with the first module by then because it's a really short time. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention is, uh, of course, like there's no mandatory presence uh, for this course, but so you have the time slots that you uh, enroll for yourselves. But if you will be absent, please let your TA know. So it's really wasteful if they sit there waiting for you. Uh, and if you don't cancel, the TA is free to move your time slot around or cancel your time slot altogether. So please let your TA know beforehand if you will be absent. And well, the final words is of course, have a lot of fun with this course. Uh, students seem to enjoy this course. It uh, receives great feedback, but it requires some effort. Uh, it's a lot of work and a lot of debugging, but hopefully uh, we'll be able to help you a lot. There's a discussion board to get help. And of course you can always contact your TA. So good luck and see you later.